and today we're talking about IP version 4 and basically on the internet um, at layer 3 of the OSI um, bound to layer 2 in the MAC address any two computers that are going to communicate need to have uh, you know different IP addresses you can think of an IP as a unique identifier or a unique number um, maybe each computer's phone number and for one computer to communicate with another it has to dial up that computer's phone number and there is a logic and there's a structure to IP addressing um, it's split up into both classes and there's also classless and there's IP version 4 and IP version 6 so let's take a look at the settings we have on this computer right now I'm just going to open a command prompt and use a command called ipconfig space forward slash and all to list all my command settings I'm going to pipe it to something called more so it'll pause okay I'm just looking at, at different settings here and basically this is what I'm interested in um, this is a laptop and this is my wireless network adapter but this is the particular IP version 4 address that I've leased from a DHCP server notice that um, you know there are four parts to it separated by decimals and these are known as octets or bytes and a byte is composed of eight bits and this particular address I'm on a class C network there are different classes we'll talk about them in a minute so I'm 109.207.13.14 okay so let's let that represent my computer if that were to be my computer then so this is sort of my unique identifier and let's say that A represents my laptop okay and you can see that I'm, I'm 14 and then I'm going to use the ping command and ping my router um, okay and that's my router so for any two devices in the network to communicate they must have unique IP addresses and I'm just going to move this over here and we'll let that represent the router or the gateway so I'm pinging I'm getting echo replies we're communicating back and forth between A and B because and only because we have compatible IP addresses so we'll take a look at that have you ever wondered how you know bits um, or how you know your memory registry works in your computer how is it that large numbers and sequences um, can be represented in binary when you only have really two states on or off and basically an octet or a byte table is arranged like so and there are columns and the byte and these bits can be turned on or off and each one has a place value um, you know in in terms of a power of two so for instance if I were to turn all of these off well that would be the decimal equivalent of zero okay and if I were to turn all of these on That would be the decimal equivalent of 255 right so this is a base 2 number system the byte table itself and we're accustomed to decimal which is a base 10 number system okay so that gives me a possible range of anywhere from 0 all bits off to 255 all bits on and by combining billions upon billions of these byte tables each composed of 8 bits and turning combinations of them on and off I can represent any value in between that such as if I wanted to represent the value 3 off 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 and then the 2 place and the 1 place would be on and that would give me 3 let's say that I wanted to represent 5 um, in this case I could turn the 4 bit on and the one bit on. So zero 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 one zero one is binary for the decimal value of five. Um, let's randomly pick another number. Let's say ninety three. Um, all right. So where to represent ninety three? I could go here and I could say, well, one twenty eight is too large, so I have to leave that one turned off. Sixty four is small. I can turn that on. Um, I want ninety three. 
Well, the problem is if I turn the 32-bit on, I'm going to end up at 96, and that's too much. So I have to leave that one turned off. But I could turn the 16-bit on, all right? And then um, that would give me um, 80, and then 88, 92, and 93, okay? So 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and binary would be the decimal or base 10 equivalent of 93. And so we find that you know we can represent any number in a byte table from 0 through 255 by turning these bits on and off. And I can represent larger values. Like I said, there are billions of these bytes. And so um, you know everything from storing video data to MP3s and sound to well, anything you can think of can ultimately be reduced to a sequence of binary bits turned on and off, on and off, on and off. And these are, you know, these are basically imprinted on chips and sandwiched between different layers of silicon in the chip lithography process. And, you know, these are basically electrons jumping across and, and completing circuits here. But um, that's what we're talking about when we talk about computer memory um, and IP addressing. Okay, so. When we say, um, when we talk about four octets or four bytes, we mean that each byte has eight bits, so therefore an IP version 4 address is a 32-bit address. Okay, and let's take a look at that. So if this is my address here, then how does that translate into binary? Well, 199, all right, and that's my first octet. So I think about what I would turn on here. In this case, I could turn on the 128-bit, um, to get my 199, Excuse me, to get my 199, and then if I turn on the 64-bit, okay, um, that would give me a 192, and then I can't t use the 32-bit; it's just too large or too big. Since I already have a 192, I only need seven more, so I need to turn these bits off. But the 4 and the 2 and the 1, I would turn on. And so this value right here, I'll highlight that. This value right here represents 199. Okay, that's in base 10, but in binary, it's 11000111. All right, so that's my first octet, my first byte. And then the next one's 207. So how would I do that? Well, I'd turn the 128 bit on and I'd Turn the 64 bit on, that'd give me 192. And it also, um, you know, if at 192, um, I couldn't really turn on the, the 32 bit. It's just too large. Okay, so I have to turn or shut that one off. Um, and then in this case, um, this would give me um, 108. Uh, we had 208. So that's, again, that's just too large. I want to turn this off. And um, 192, so that gives me, if I turn this on, that's 200, and then 204, 206, and 207. Okay, so at base 10, the second digit here, the second octet, the second byte, is 11001111 in binary. Okay, and let's look at the third octet, or the third byte, the 13. All right, off because that bit's too large. 64 is too large. 32 is too large. 16 is too large. I can turn the 8 bit on, the 4 bit on to give me 12, the second bit off, and the 1 bit on to give me 13. So now we see 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 in binary. Base 2 is the same as 13 in decimal or base 10. And finally, let's go here and look at uh, number 14. Again, these bits are too large, so I have to turn them off. The 128, the 64, the 32, and the 16. Now, when I get to 8, I can turn 8 on. 4, that gives me 12. Turn the 2 bit on, and that gives me 14. And shut the 1 bit off. So now I can see again, in base 10 or decimal, the number 14 is the same as 00001110 in binary. Okay, so... When we see this, all right, in other words, when I do IP config and let me show my address again. When I do IP config and I see 
my IP address really what it is is a you know it's a binary representation or ultimately it's a binary representation a 32-bit IP address and the same would go for my router All right so that's just sort of a brief introduction of the basics of how you convert base 10 to base 2 and you know how is it that a number that we recognize in decimal becomes or is represented as a number in binary.